Penalty marker down. Boy, I am hard pressed to recall a state championship game with this many penalties in it. And it looks like a walk off against Hoover. That's a big assist because that was another stop for the Hoover defense. The face mask penalty moves it up to the 25. The Trojans get the down over. So it is second down and six now. Mosley in the flat, almost picked off. Taylor Brown stepping in front of the intended receiver, almost picked it off and it's nothing but real sense. estate. Yep. Wow. I think Lampakis might have gotten a hand in and helped deflect that ball. So the two times that Daphne has tried to go upstairs to pick up a little real estate, it has almost been disaster. Third down and six. We're under the six minute mark in the football game. Mosley looks, throws out in the flat, caught by Yeldon, long way to go and he's not going to get there. Yeldon stopped at the 27 yard line. It'll be a fourth and three. And the Trojans in all likelihood will punt the football here. No decision to be made here. You punt this football away. We're gonna take the game under five minutes left to play. Hoover sends Dakota Daniel back to return this punt. That's a switch. Caleb Sims had been returning punts prior to this. Daniel is a junior standing on his own 40 yard line. Low snap fielded on one hop. Pretty good punt considering the bad snap. Fair caught by Daniel at the 37. Nice hands there on the part of the punter. Well, and a great kick as well. Has to sidestep a rushing Hoover defender. Gets off a turnover spiral. Really changes the field. Couldn't ask for a whole lot more there. Football down on the 38 yard line and the Hoover Pucks will try for the third time to overcome this one point deficit. Brian Carter thrown for almost 2,500 yards this year, 24 touchdowns. Has had an incredible year, but can he do it one more time? First down to Denson, great catch at the 35. And Jalen Denson brought down at the 33 yard line by Torin McGaster. Just back shoulder fade, corner gets lost. Torin McGuster was turned around. Jalen Denson goes up and makes a heck of a grab. First and 10, Hoover on the 33. MacArthur up the middle. Broke one tackle, still fighting. Slammed to the ground after a four yard gain. Be second and six. Clock ticks down to 415. Michael Pierce and Kevin Wilson, two linebackers in on the stop. You're watching the AHSAA Super Six brought to you by Jax. The finale game, the 6A championship going right down to the wire. Ryan Carter on second and six. Screen pass to MacArthur. First down inside the Daphne 20 yard line. This Daphne defense has been called on so many times here in the second half, Ken playing that aggressive defense, potentially a crack here late in the fourth quarter. Ball nosing inside the 20. First down play coming up. Two wides to the right. 
MacArthur in the backfield with Ryan Carter. MacArthur gets the call. Slips one tackle, but too much pursuit there, and he goes down in the grasp of Chris Hill. Hill is a 5'8", 215-pound senior linebacker for the Daphne Trojans. They give him a short gain of about a yard or two. Second down, and let's call it nine from the 18. And we're under the three-minute mark in the football game. Carter lines him up, surveys the defense. It's MacArthur up the middle, short gain. Coach Niblett may be playing for a little field position here. He's got the good kicker. And I mentioned multiple times in the first half that I thought the middle of this defense was where Hoover would be able to attack. Let me retract that statement. This, <laughs> this Daphne front three, and really front seven, but the front three, only three defensive linemen have played a fantastic ball game tonight. Really stepped up well and played the run so aggressively. Third down and six. Carter play action fake. Got his man. First down. Down at the two yard line. And there again, the play action fake to MacArthur works like a charm. And the ball caught out here in the near flat for a first and goal. That was Brandon Cochran who caught the pass. First and goal from the one. Play action boot, hits the H back out of the backfield. Nice play call. We have an injured Daphne player down here on the near sideline on about the four yard line. And there has been some brutal hitting in this football game. The injured player for Daphne is Kendall Minifield, who has been just a terror in the defensive secondary, and it is great to see him up and jogging off the field. Minifield has already had two interceptions called back by penalty tonight. All right, Hoover lines up with a chance to take the lead. First and goal at the one. MacArthur looking to take the direct snap. He's got it up the middle. No signal yet. Eric Lee shoots in from the defensive end spot again. He's going to be short. Be second and goal from inside the Daphne one yard line. Credit 44 Kevin Wilson with penetration as well. Once again, it'll be MacArthur with a direct snap. Up the middle one more time. No signal. Ryan Anderson, number seven, the opposite defensive end. So both defensive ends with great penetration. Now Daphne's going to take one of those last two timeouts. Yeah, they need to conserve some clock now. Absolutely. Minute 23 remain. We'll be looking at a third and goal from the one. All right, here's a little hypothetical for you. Let's say they don't make it on third and goal. You kick it? I think, I think this play has to be a run off right tackle. You try to get it down towards the middle of the field. If you don't get in, you kick the field goal. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. You take the 9-7 to seven lead, and you put your defense out on the field. But if that it's, calls if it's for a tie, I think it's a different story. Right. But it's a field goal to win the ball game. But that's a potential call. Hoover's got one more crack from the one-yard line. You're listening and watching the AHSAA Super 6 brought to you by Jax. This is the final football game of two incredible days of football here at Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn. And what an exciting way for the uh, week to wind down with the 6-8 title on the line. The Hoover Bucks, the defending champions, six championships in the last 10 years. Can they do it again? Third and goal play on the way. MacArthur dives in, false start. Penalty marker on the play, hold the phone. Hold the phone. 
And that's going to change the strategy significantly. False start on the Bucks, and the ball will come back to the six. Second uh, touchdown we've seen negated by a penalty today. We've seen two interceptions brought back from the flags. So now it stays third and goal. Now kicker Larson Real is starting to think maybe he's going to get his chance to make a difference here. Hoover goes trips to the right. Single flanker left. I'm going to have two guys on 88. I know that. <laughs> you know that's true. Watch for MacArthur maybe on a little flare coming out of the backfield. They've had a lot of success with that tonight. All right, Carter surveys the defense. And I'm not sure exactly what the holdup here is. Looks like they're trying to get the clocks synced up. One twenty-three is where we stand right now, left in the ball game. Here we go. Ryan Carter running back over to the sideline to see if there's any last minute change in the strategy. Third and goal. Under pressure, Carter over the middle, knocked down, incomplete. Great play by Daphne's Leo Batista, 5'6", 175-pound junior. Nice play. Heck of a play by Chris Hill, the linebacker. He took such a big swat to defend that ball, I think he might have had time to intercept it. <laughs> this is like a volleyball spike. So Larson Real lines up for a 22-yard field goal to take the lead at the 119 mark of the ball game. High snap. Kick is no good. No good. Cole, you knew it was in trouble when the snap was high. You just... You can't have the ball first and goal on the two and expect it to come down to your kicker. It can't happen. That's the second missed field goal of the night for Larson Real. Remember the penalty took points off the board and then unable to capitalize. Low line drive, hooked it left. Boy, if you like a football game with turns of fortune, this Rivers has been your with contest. Two timeouts, minute 15, so. Could very realistically get another shot at the football here. And a timeout is being called by Daphne. They are going to be looking for a way to pick up a couple of first downs. Well, they're going to pull Russ Mosley aside and say, no more passing. <laughs> Hand it off. That has not worked out well for them in this football game. Well, we want to take the opportunity to thank everybody affiliated with the Alabama High School Athletic Association. They've done such an outstanding job of staging another Super Six week. Two incredible days of football. Our state champions are Sweetwater, Leroy, Leeds, Thomasville, Spanish Fort, and yet to be determined here in 6A. But Executive Director Steve Savarese can be very proud of his crew and his staff. They've treated everybody great. And attendance-wise, I think they're very pleased with the numbers. Any way you look at it, it's been another great event. It really has. Not to mention a great game. All right, here we go. First and 10 Trojans on their own 20. Mosley, handoff to Holloway, and there won't be much going up the middle right now. Hoover immediately stops the clock as we go down to the 111 mark. You're looking, Daphne really just needs one first down. You're going to have a second down play here. Hoover will probably take their second and last time out after that play. Yep, the Bucks can stop the clock one more time, and then that's it. But as you said, I'm sure there's a temptation for Daphne to try to go upstairs and pick no, up a first not. down and put the no, game no, away. 
<laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. I, I don't know who's having that temptation, but <laughs> it should clear their mind immediately. That's right. Slap that right out of them. And the Hoover Bucks, what a football dynasty. Six championships in the last 10 years. They are the defending state champion. They just seem to reload instead of rebuilding. Their program really has national stature. You see people wearing Hoover caps and Hoover jerseys all over the nation. Trying to find a miracle now to pull out another one. Second down play, handoff is to Holloway. Maybe two yards over left tackle. That will be the final timeout, the final opportunity to stop the clock for the Hoover Bucks. We're at the 106 mark. I guess the question you really ask yourself now, Ken, is how much time can Daphne realistically run out without getting another first down? They'll have this down, and then you assume a punt on fourth down if they don't convert, so. You try to do the math here. 25 seconds is allowed per play. So they can run it down to about 41 and then run off another 25 before they punt. So you'd figure Hoover gets the ball with about 16, 17, 18 seconds. Did I do that right? Well, it's not going to run down here. So <laughs> it'll only run down once after this third down play. So maybe about 40 seconds, depending on how long the play is. Yeah, you're right. They don't get the run down here. The clock stops until the snap. Here's the third down play. Inside handoff goes to uh -oh. Yellen. First down. And ball Daphne's going to win the, the ball loose. No, first down Daphne. I think the ball came loose and he recovered it. Wow. That's it. Wow. And the Daphne Trojans are apparently going to win the football game on an incredible run by Yeldon. If this ball popped, there it is, popped out, and he scooped it up himself. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, you know, a team that has had so many unfortunate breaks as they tend to an injured player down on the field, and it's Yeldon. Yeah, it is Yeldon. He's up, and he looks like he's okay. But a team that endured so many breaks going against him in this football game, but that time, the ultimate break, the fumble of the ball, and it comes right back to T.J. Yeldon. And look for Daphne to go into the old victory formation now. We're under the one-minute mark at 57 seconds. Hoover cannot stop the clock. And it begins to roll down. Mosley will simply take a knee. And the Daphne Trojans, for the first time since 2001, are going to be the state 6A high school football champions. The Hoover Bucks got all the way to the title game to defend their title, but it was not meant to be after a missed field goal attempt, a 22-yard attempt went awry. Clock down to 10 seconds. Obviously, Daphne does not have to run a play. The fans are ecstatic, and the Daphne Trojans are the state champions. Pandemonium on the sideline, and the Hoover Bucks, nothing to be ashamed of for them. They finish 14 and one. And they'll just go back and prepare for what will undoubtedly be another run in 2011. But what a story for this Daphne team that faced, it seemed like, so many unfortunate breaks during the game and just never gave up. They really never gave up, continued to press, made the proper adjustments. That defense really came out in the second half, was able to get penetration, pressure on the quarterback, forcing turnovers. And then obviously, like you said, Ken, they got a few breaks in the second half. The penalty pulls points off the board. Obviously, false start makes it third and goal from the five or six yard line rather than the one. 
but a resilient football team that's going to be state champions for 2010. Head coach Glenn Vickery, his career record now 228 wins and 110 losses. And Daphne finishes a perfect 15 and 0 in 2010. And Chris Womack is down on the field with the uh, winning team. Chris? Coach, you guys trailed until the 11 minute mark in the fourth quarter, but your team gutted out and won. What does this say about your group? Well, it's been that way all year. I mean, our kids play every play, and uh, no secret. I mean, you know, we make plays, and what a great, what a great Hoover team, and what a great defense. We couldn't move the ball, and, you know, we found a way. I mean, congratulations to the Trojans, Hoover Bucks. You know, I'm just, I'm just so proud of our kids and uh, our community. We just found a way. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. God's blessed us, and uh, you know, what a way to end the season. There at the very end, they had a chance to put six more on the board, but a senior, Chris Hill, stepped up and made a big play. What does that say about your seniors? Well, I think it just says about the character of our kids. I mean, senior, juniors, you got to make plays. And, you know, one thing we stress, that they're not in yet, and, you know, you got to believe some of that stuff, and then you got to execute it. And, you know, what a great job by our defense. I mean, you hold Hoover to one touchdown, you know, you know, you did something right on defense, and you know, they, they stuffed us, we stuffed them, and, and we found a way to get that extra point and win the game. You know, not only did you win the state championship, but your kids got to play at an SEC stadium. Just talk about the overall experience for these kids. Well, if I do all that, I start crying because I mean, it's just a, it's an emotional experience. You know, what history's here, what program's here. You know, we're, we're just proud to represent the state of Alabama as a quality football and, and a quality school. All right, coach, congratulations again. Thank you. All right, that was uh, oh, oh, we we have Coach Niblet also. Coach, you guys led until the 11 minute mark, but just wasn't enough. Just talk about the great game your kids well, played. Well, my hats are off to Daphne, but you know I just thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man, for the opportunity for us to be able to compete. I'm surrounded by such great kids and great coaches. We've had a great year. You know, we take ownership and responsibility in winning championships. We didn't win it tonight. We had some opportunities. We didn't take full advantage, and they had a little bit to do with that. Uh, but like I said, we're blessed, blessed to have great kids. And, uh, and like I said, I take full responsibility for it. And, uh, you know, we didn't play our best game, and they had something to do with that tonight. But we had some opportunities in the game. And, uh, you know, I was proud of our defense. I thought we came in and played well. You know, we didn't play as well on defense as we would have wanted to. Uh, and at the same time, when you, when you don't do that in big games, that's normally what it comes down to is turnovers and special teams. You guys moved the ball very well throughout the game. Uh, what kept you guys from Well, I mean, the biggest thing is you got to finish drives. You don't get points for stats of moving the ball in between the 20s. When you get inside the 20s, you got to score. And, you know, we had a ball on the one down here. And, you know, we got to be able to punch that ball in, and we didn't. But like I said, man, I mean, I'm just – I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed to be surrounded by great people, man. All right, Coach, you guys played Thank a great you, game. God bless you. Thank All you. All right. Well, there were both of the coaches. Daphne takes the game 7-6. to six. After the break, we'll have the trophy presentation, and Ken and Cole will have more from the booth. Time for our fourth drive of the game, and it's by number four, T.J. Eldon. It wasn't a very long play, but it was the biggest play of that young man's career right there. Absolutely. Sealed a state championship for Daphne 2010. That would turn out to be the only touchdown of the football game for the Trojans, but the extra point by Brandon Roberts was just what they needed to win, 7-6. to six. And Larson Reel, the kicker for Hoover, misses a 22-yard field goal after a high snap that would have given Hoover the lead. There's uh, Hoover coach Josh Niblett accepting the runner-up trophy as the uh, Hoover Bucks. They're disappointed now, but Cole, I'm sure that after they get back home and have a little while to think about it, they're going to realize they have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of, but I can tell you, I've been there and lost a state championship game, and it's you'll replay certain plays from this ball game for the rest of your life. This just doesn't go away. Coach Glenn Vickery, what a triumph for him as he comes out to accept the championship. 229 coaching victories in his career. And here's the announcement of the Most Valuable Player Award. And the most valuable player is Michael Pierce, a linebacker, a 6'2 senior. How about that? A defensive player is player of the game. I like it. Eight tackles, two unassisted, 10 total, one tackle for loss. In a 7-6 to six game, why not give the MVP to a defensive player? 
So many stars in this game. There he is right there, Michael Pierce. And here comes the presentation of the actual plaque. You know that one's going to find a place of honor in a very large trophy case down in Daphne, Alabama. The runner-up trophy, Jalen Benson, a senior, played tight end last year for this team, converted to wide receiver, several big plays tonight, and he'll be coming back to this stadium to play his college football. That is Steve Savaris, whom you heard from at halftime, the executive director of the Alabama High School Athletic Association, presenting the trophy to Coach Vickery and a very deserving Daphne Trojan football team. Their first one since 2001. And now the players get a chance to handle the hardware. Well, I'll tell you what, these guys will go on to various different careers. They'll get married, they'll raise families, but they'll never forget this moment, will they? Absolutely not. And they can say they did it in Auburn, Alabama, at Jordan Hare Stadium. Seven to six, Daphne a winner in a football game that had a little bit of everything. Twists and turns and changes of fortune. We want to give a special thanks to Auburn uh, HD and all their production here at the AHSAA Super 6. Again, a wonderful job by the production staff. Our flagship station, CBS 42, and all of their personnel tonight did just a great job. It's been awesome to be a part of it. We want to congratulate not only Daphne, but all of our state champions tonight. In Class 1A, Sweetwater, with a 36 to nothing win over R.A. Hubbard. In Class 2A, Leroy over Realtown, 34 to seven. In Class 3A, the Leeds Green Wave has another trophy for the case. They beat Hamilton, 42 to 32. In 4A, Thomasville over Deschler, 59 to 34. In 5A, Spanish Fort shut out Briarwood Christian, 14 to nothing. And of course, tonight, in a heartstopper in the 6A final, Daphne knocks off Hoover by a score of 7 to 6. We'll be right back. Well, we're going to wrap it up right here. Cole Kubelik, any final thoughts tonight? Heck of a ball game. Congratulations to Daphne. 2010 6A state champions. Tremendous ball game for Cole Kubelik and Mark Womack. I'm Ken Lass. Thank you for joining us. So long from Auburn, Alabama.